Hi there, Richard Fulmer here, and welcome to another Richard's Rock Rambles. I have with me this evening uh, Charlie, my co-host. He won't be saying too much, he's probably just going to sit there and look pretty. So, <laughs> we've been looking at band's second albums, you know, the all-important second album. Last time around we had a look at Jethro Tull's Stand Up from 1969. We're going to stay with that same year. In fact, this band released their incredible debut album in 69 as well as the follow-up so the first one was in january 69 and the second one was in april between april and august 1969 was when they recorded their second album i'm talking about led zeppelin and you can see how hungry they were i mean two albums in one year they just enjoyed playing together for so much and they'd already gone over to the states i think they'd already done about two american tours by the time the second album came around so this was the big debut album, and I'm sure most of you have got this in your collection and you know about this album, a classic. I mean, there's not a bad track on you, Good Times, Bad Times, Days and Confused, Black Mountain Side, Communication, Breakdown, you know the rest. This is a classic. So that was in January of 1969. So they were still very productive, they had a lot of ideas, and yes, they did borrow from the, the blues masters. And I know a lot of people have said that Led Zeppelin have never thanked those guys. But I mean, come on. You know, everybody did it back in the day. In fact, people still do it. They borrow, they steal things. They don't always say thank you. But yeah, not everything was their own writing. They did borrow from the past masters, as is uh, as happens in the music world. You know, in rock, in jazz, rap, whatever. So, like I said, this was recorded between April and August 1969, their second album, and it would simply be called Led Zeppelin II. There wasn't a title for the album. In fact, the next one would also be Led Zeppelin III. It was only from really their fifth album onwards, from Houses of the Holy, that they gave their albums titles. Quite a heavy album, this. Probably one of the heaviest in the Zeppelin uh, discography. So, and then it was released on the Atlantic label on the 27th, 22nd of October 1969. So quite a few months after the recording, it was released. Produced by Jimmy Page and engineered for the first time in certain tracks by our very own Eddie Kramer, who of course had done work with Jimi Hendrix prior to working with Zeppelin. And of course afterwards he would have worked with many other artists. One of the uh, iconic producers of the era, of the 70s especially. And uh, yeah, he had a particular style, and I think him and Jimmy Page worked pretty well together. So the album went to number one in the UK and the US album charts, which is amazing. And that was in 1969, so it was a really good year for them. Four times platinum in the UK, and listen to this, 12 times platinum in the US. I think you're doing all right. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to wet my whistle. Cheers to you guys, it's a lovely evening here in Cape Town. Seeing as we're in the Cape, let's have a glass of wine. Cheers. So, let's have a look at this bad boy. There we go, Led Zeppelin II, with that famous picture of the guys posing amongst what I would imagine to be First World War fighter pilots. You can see in the front there, there's John Paul Jones, Robert Plant, Jimmy Page, and there's John Bonham. And that's the back. So this is the 2014, this is part of the 2014 remastered reissued series a really great job jimmy page has done a lot of you can see he went to a lot of time and trouble when he re-released uh, re these you know this is led zeppelin was his baby um and he was definitely going to make a good job of it so this has got a a bonus disc a companion disc if you like which has got different mixes so there's a whole lot of love rough mix with vocal what is and what should never be rough mix with vocals. So these are all as they were working on the songs, which is quite interesting to hear because obviously it's not the finished article and uh, they're getting to where they want to be. But even these rough mixes sound amazing. Uh, thank you, backing track, heartbreaker, rough mix with vocal, uh, living, loving made, also backing track, ramble on, Moby Dick. So the whole album and there's something called La La Intro, <laughs> which is quite interesting. So... Let me just see if I can show you what else is on here. There we go. That was on the original inside cover of the vinyl. There's the band looking very fresh-faced. There's John Paul Jones, Robert Plant with a hat, John Bonham, and there's the enigmatic Jimmy Page. And there they are live on stage doing their thing. 
long before the days of big screens and fancy pyrotechnics, there was just the band playing, and that's all that the audience had. But with Zeppelin, that was all you needed. They were such a good band at that stage. You know, as I said, they were really hungry, and uh, the music was just so powerful. I would have killed. If I had a time machine, I'd go back to see Zeppelin in the early days. So that's the cover there. So you get a nice booklet that comes with this album. Let's just see if I can show you. There they are again. Jimmy Page, John Paul Jones, Robert Plant, and there's Mr. Bonham. The animal behind the kit. There they are again. That's Jimmy with his guitar in the studio, the acoustic. And there's Bonham, John Paul Jones, and Robert Plant, I think. Yes. And there's Jimmy having a laugh. These guys were having such a duel in the early days. They were really feeding off each other. There's a couple of live shots of those massive 26-inch Ludwig bass, uh, bass drums that John Paul John, uh, John Bonham has there. And there's John Paul Jones behind, uh, underneath with a Fender bass. And that's Robert Plant wearing um, rather tight pants. But I, that was his thing, you know. He left nothing to the imagination, of course. Uh, and there's Jimmy Pose looking like a tramp with his coat. There we are with his Les Paul, his favorite guitar. I think that, that and a Telecast in the early days, is, and the Dan Electro, I think those are the ones that he played there. The amps, and there's a massive crowd, even in those days. Look at the size of that crowd. I mean, you think, you know, you're doing something right when you get a crowd that size. So those are just the tracks, and then the companion disc as well tells you all about it, the credits. So, what are the tracks on here? I mean, this is such a cool album. Excuse me. So it starts off with a classic. I mean, this track became iconic, like Smoke on the Water and Paranoid from Sabbath. Whole lot of love, which has got that really interesting middle piece where you get the panning from left to right and Robert Plant screeching up a storm and giving all these sexual oohs and ahs as, as he used to do back in the day. Then you go into what is and what should never be with a sort of understated vocal from Robert Plant. All these songs have got amazing hooks, a lot of melody, but a lot of power. This is a really heavy album. Uh, the Lemon Song, which is stolen from a blues uh, artist, I think. They, they just changed the wording a bit uh, with the juice running down the leg and all the rest of it. You know, very eyebrow raising for 1969, I would imagine. And then it goes into Thank You, which so that was on side one. All brilliant tracks. They just jump out of the speaker and floor you. I mean, I can listen to this album today. This was in 69. We're in 2022. It's as exciting to me today as it was the first time I heard it when I was a, a teenager. Had more hair and it wasn't as grey as this. Anyway, we move on to side two, Heartbreaker. Another huge hit for the band. A crowd favourite. Great riff from Jimmy Page. Some, there's some excellent lead guitar work on here, as well as just great riffs. Living Loving Made is the next track with some brilliant drumming from John, uh, John Bonham. Uh, it's actually Living Loving Made in brackets. She's just a woman. Ramble On is the next track. And then we get into John Bonham's showpiece, Moby Dick, which of course on stage would go on sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes a bit longer, depending on how you felt on the night. And lastly, the track is Bring It On Home. I think that's the one where Robert Plant brings out his mouth organ, his harmonica. A really good harmonica play, in fact. And uh, he lets, lets rip on that track. So yeah, this is another stunning album. As good as that iconic debut. You have to have these in your collection. If you're a Zeppelin fan, if you don't have this, why don't you have it? This, this, these one and two hits, amazing. I mean, for me personally, I'm a huge Zeppelin fan, probably my favorite band of all time. I don't think they've ever released a bad album. I know a lot of people don't like Presence. Funny enough, that's my favorite album. Um, In Through the Outdoor was a bit patchy, but I think they were trying different things. And, and who knows what would have happened if Bonham hadn't passed, which direction they would have gone on. I think they probably would have gone a little bit more electronic. Even on that album, In Through the Outdoor, you can see John Paul Jones had a lot more uh, to do on the keyboards and synthesizers and what have you. So there we go, Led Zeppelin 2, um, a must-have, as I said. And almost every track on there 
worked in the live situation. You know, sometimes the studio thing doesn't always work live. That whole album does. Next time around, I'm not too sure what we're going to do yet, but no doubt it'll be interesting. And next time will be the 100th episode of Richard's Rock Rambles. Yeah, I can't believe it, 100 episodes. So we'll see what happens next time. Have a great week. Look after yourselves. Please, if you haven't yet, down below, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And take care. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.